So other matters now. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics reveals that the 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory, recorded 849.12 billion naira as internally generated revenue between January and June 2021, which is higher than 2020. Lagos State recorded the highest IGR in review period with 267.23 billion naira, accounting for 31% of the total IGR recorded in the period under review. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, FAC, shared the sum of 725.57 billion naira to the three tiers of government as Federation allocation for the month of March. States received about 227 billion naira, the local government councils got 167 billion naira, while the oil producing states received 53 billion naira as derivation, that's 13 percent of mineral revenue. To discuss how states can increase their internally generated revenue, the chairman, Odua Investment Company Limited, and former commissioner for commerce and industry in Ogun State, Mr. Bimboa Shiru, joins us from New York in the United States of America. A pleasure having you with us on the program. Thank you very much, Melinda, for having me on your program today. Now, what are the challenges in Nigeria in the area of generating a profitable internally generated revenue across all states? Yes, um, that's a very good question. Um, the challenges, I will tell you, they are in three folds. First of all, the issue of integrity is very key. Secondly, the poverty level in Nigeria is another problem. And thirdly, in, I mean, governments are not paying so much attention to it. And I'll tell you why. If you look at the leakages in the government revenue in Nigeria, especially in the states, is so much. And because the so-called uh, political supporters, they wanted to be given, I will give you a good example when I was in government, um, the IGR, I mean, internally revenue generation, you have um, um, haulage collection. And all these fellow guys will collect this money and they put it in their pocket. First of all, we need to do something in Nigeria. And what they need to do is to stop payment of cash. Because people, when they collect cash, if you collect 100,000 naira, you put 50,000 in your pocket and you give government this. But if you, the TSA that was introduced is something that will help. And I can tell you, states can generate revenue locally. The local government can generate revenue. The states can generate revenue. There are so many areas where they can. And I will give you a good example. Look at natural road transport um, workers, natural road transport. They, you see them on the road, collecting, giving receipts, collecting cash. They make billions of naira in months. And I think Lagos State is doing something. They are now trying to harmonize it. They've created a, um, a governing body that will manage that. And that is why they want to kill themselves to be members of that road, road transport um, association because they want to be president. I mean, if somebody is making an average of a billion naira every month, it's a lot of money out of, outside of the government. And these roads, they rely on government infrastructure. They go on the roads, and these are the funds that we need to be to use to fund and um, to do the necessary infrastructure to do the roads and put them in shape. But the leakages in government is the function of poverty, integrity issue, because people are taking that money into their pocket. I will oh. give you a good example. I remember, I remember in Ogun State then, when we came in, we found out that all these funds are not coming in. The ministry was making less than 500,000 naira. And we said, no, no more payment of cash in the ministry. Pay directly to the bank, bring the documentation. The revenue was increased by over 2,000%. So that means these funds have actually been going to people's pockets. So the only way to do that is a way of getting, harmonize all these things and get the right people to do it, get the right, I mean, you need to, government needs to pay attention to it because the leakages are so much. Local government, they are doing their own and they are called touts. These touts are the ones collecting money in behalf of government. No, we must eradicate that. We shouldn't have touts collecting money on behalf of government. And that is one of the problems we have in terms of the IGR too. Okay, so beyond blocking those leakages to help boost the IGR, by adopting a cashless system. Some analysts are also suggesting perhaps a law or reform in the taxation system as well to boost IGR. What's your take on that? Linda, I will tell you, there's no need for any law. Or, I mean, see, the point is that if you have found stealing government funds, you should be penalized, you should be sanctioned. There's no, it can create more than 50 laws. It won't affect this. What I'm saying is that you must block that loophole. If you don't block it, no matter what law, Nigerians will still circumvent, circumvent that law. They will still go behind to, to, to get rid of the law. So the point is that 
in any world, I mean, anywhere in the world, where I am here, the law is there. You must, you cannot dip, dip into government. And it's a very, very serious offense if you still, I mean, in, in terms of taxation or revenue here, if you steal government money, you'll be sanctioned accordingly. So no matter what law they introduce, that's not the issue. The issue is how to block all those leakages. And it's a function of poverty. So, I mean, when there's poverty in the, in the land, people will look for various ways to make money. And they, they try to block, they try to look at the leakages in government. And don't let me, don't let me, don't let us confuse ourselves. The civil servants are part of the problems. They are, we call them landlords and landlords. They are the ones that knows where every, and you see, they, they outlive government. They have different government. So they know how to get rid of these things and get these things. So we need to bring people on board and say, look, if you are caught doing this, you'll be sanctioned so many years. So you can put the laws there. Well, the law that says if you are found copied, if you are not paying your tax or you are seeing government revenue, you are sanctioned, you are going to be jailed for a five years, a term or six years term, maybe that will reduce that. But there's no law you need to introduce. It's just you need to block the holes. That's the point. And reduce payment of cash. We carry too much cash in Nigeria. It's too much. Too much okay. cash. We carry too much. So we must reduce that. Okay. Mr. Ashiru, you had a conglomerate in the Southwest region. What are the immediate benefits for the Southwest states, especially in the area of security, economic reforms, and job creation? Oh, yes. Um, you know, the Odua conglomerate, the focus, if you remember when it was established for something years ago, our forefathers, what they were looking at is the area of creating jobs, make Odua the economic hub for Southwest. And during the time, some, so many things happened and it changed. But I can, I'm happy to tell you that in the last two years, even we are trying to bring it back to, to fold. And um, I'm happy to tell you, too, that the owners of the business, the six state governors, they have started, they've started receiving um, dividends. And it clearly shows that we are focusing on so many areas. And the issue of security, yes, security is very key. Um, Amotekun was introduced in Southwest and um, fighting all the security. In, but you see, the point is this. Like I said, agriculture that will lead into realization. If we don't curb and sort out the issue of security, there's no way we can sort this thing out. We can resolve, I mean, we need to resolve the issue of security. And the issue of security, the kidnappers going to the farm, but that's why we don't have our farmers again in the farm because they are running away for their lives. I mean, if you are mixing 5 million naira in a year and they kidnapped you and they said you should bring 50 million naira, where will they find it? So the point is that our focus is on how, and uh, don't forget that uh, Udua, we are into so many areas. We are like a one-stop shop when it was established. We are into real estate, we are into hospitality, insurance, engineering, manufacturing, agricultural, and now we have been able, we've, we've, we've gotten the license, oil license. So we are into oil and gas by God's grace, and we start putting, I mean, drilling oil. So those are the areas, and we are focusing on making Udua the Southwest Economic Hub, even if it's possible, Nigerian Economic Hub and Africa. And uh, we are trying to become a world class conglomerate that would, that would compete with anyone. I mean, don't forget when Udua was there. I mean, started USC of this world, they're actually competing. It's a conglomerate that was competing. So the focus is on how we can help the government of Southwest to enhance their performance in the area of okay. security, I mean, and in the area of economy. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, the Chairman Odua Investment Company Limited, Mr. Bimbo Ashiru. A pleasure sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you very much for having me, Linda. A lovely day.